Many of us have seen James Veach's comedic YouTube videos of him interacting with email scammers. Today's guest shares how he helps real-world victims of those scams, and he has participated in taking down criminal enterprises. Today's guest is Wayne May. Wayne May is the owner of ScamSurvivors.com. He began as a scam baiter in 2005 before concentrating on helping the victims of scams. Scam Survivors was created in 2012 by Wayne, along with a small group of like-minded volunteers. He has appeared in the media worldwide, as well as being a guest speaker at the iDate conferences discussing romance scams. I'm your host, Chris Parker, and this is the Easy Prey Podcast. Wayne, thank you so much for coming on the Easy Prey Podcast. I really appreciate your time today. Uh, thank you for having me. So can you give me some background of how you started the uh, Scam Survivors website? Well, 15 years ago, pretty much uh, 15 years ago, I was just looking for something fun to do. Went on to Google, typed in funny, went to a site, looked, looked at what was on there, clicked the link to another site, and so on and so forth. And it took me to this thing, what operating system are you? It's one of these stupid quizzes. So I did the quiz, and it whatever it said, and then said, would you like to see what Nigerian spammer are you? So... Okay, never heard of this before. So I typed it in, came up with some name. I Googled the name and discovered scam baiting and spent probably six or seven hours reading the stories, uh, laughing my head off at it. I thought, well, these guys are idiots. These scammers are so incredibly stupid. I'm a fairly intelligent person. I reckon I could have some fun with these. So I started off as a scam baiter and fell into dealing with romance scammers purely by accident. So I was dealing with these scammers, and somebody would write to me and say, would you help us? Our relative is being scammed right now. Uh, They're convinced it's real. Would you be willing to speak to this scammer, pretend to be a victim so we can prove to them that they are a scammer, they're not real? So this took a few months after I started doing this, And I started speaking to more and more people and kind of realized, well, messing with scams is fun, but there is so much more I can do helping people who have been the victims of scams. So my priorities change from just having fun with scams. I still have fun with scams, don't get me wrong, but it's now a lot less important than it used to be. And it went from having fun with scams to actually helping the people who were being scammed, who thought they were being scammed, helping to stop people being scammed. And this went on for a few years, and I gathered uh, a group of people around me who I trust completely. They were very like-minded with me as well. And we said, well, let's make our own site. Let's do things the way we feel it should be done, because not every site we go on is doing things the right way. Not every site is doing things the way we feel it's the right way. So we said, right, we'll make our own site. They lumbered me with the task of doing it. (laughs) <laughs> so I went on and I bought the site name, put up a very simple uh, front page, put up a forum, and it went from there. And it's grown and grown ever since. That's that's an amazing story. It's it's kind of I've had some of those similar experiences myself. Can you tell me a little bit more about what scam baiting is and tell the audience about that? Scam baiting is when you receive a four one nine email, you know the kind you get, you won ten point five million dollars. Uh, typically, you get this, you delete it, or you send a reply back to a scammer with two words, tell him to basically go forth and procreate. What a scam bait would do is write back, say, oh, really? Can you tell me more? So the scammer will write back to you, and then you write back to him, and he wastes his time, and you get that information as much as you can, and you post it up online to warn other people, and then you try to get them to do silly things. You might get them to do... For example, if you call them up, you might get them to sing a song. You might get them to hold up a sign with something funny on it. Uh, I'm Welsh, in case you can't tell by the accent. And there's a phrase in Welsh, which is achavi. And it, it had no literal translation. It Basically, if you've stepped in something nasty on the side of the road, you go, oh, achavi. And I had a scammer to hold up a sign that said achavi. <laughs> I had uh, scammers put underwear on their head because I thought that was a funny thing at the time. and. We would phone up scammers as well, because if they give you their phone number, free reign to phone them up. And we've done so many things with them for a number of years now where we phone them up and we play these scenarios out in front of them. 
and they have no clue that they're a part of this um, improv comedy, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, you can you come in and we'll just see if the scammer says something funny. We will go off on that tangent. For example, a scammer once said, if I'm lying to you, I will kill myself. And we jumped in that. Oh, my God, he's going to kill himself. We were suicide watch. We told him we were going to phone up the police to come to his house because we didn't want him to kill himself. And it just becomes this ridiculous comedy, like a farce uh, as such. But again, that's all you know. fun doing that. Also get that scammer information out there so the public can find it as well. Because the scammers are using scripts. All the emails you receive are all pre-written. If you get one of them, post it up. Come, come to scamsurvivors.com. We have a forum. You can post them up there and get that out so other people are warned as well. So there's that side of it, but it's also the fun side of it. And that's, in a nutshell, what scam baiting is. I have done that at some point in my life as well. I, uh, As I was, I was just telling you earlier, I had sent them mm -hmm. a... Uh, a request to hold up a sign that had my uh, my quote unquote name on yeah. it, which was uh, I am, and then the last name was a criminal, and I got mm -hmm. at least got one or two guys <laughs> to hold up a sign, yeah. basically saying I'm a criminal. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, they will if they're that desperate. They will, and because they don't necessarily, you know, like you said, they're working off of scripts. They don't necessarily mm -hmm. know English well yeah. enough to, you know, once you throw a few letters around and it gets out of context, they kind of don't know what they're they're saying or yeah. doing. Well, it's the same with the names that we use. My main scam baiting character is, uh, I'm not going to say the name, but I will say that if you look up the program Do South, Leslie Nielsen's character, his character in Do South is one of my baiting names. <laughs> so, uh, And they have no idea. And it's, and it's always fun that when you've got the inside joke and they don't. Yes. Oh, very much so. But there's definitely a really serious side to what's happening because people actually do fall victim to uh, these types of scams. Are there any kind of new emerging scams that you're seeing in the last six months or so that uh, prior to the six months you hadn't seen? Well, it's not so much new scams. It's variations of old scams. Uh, right now, with the coronavirus thing going on, the Cameroonian scammers who would typically be pretending to sell pets or medication – have now got all these websites up claiming to sell the, the face masks, keywords for coronavirus, and that has jumped in leaps and bounds over the past, just the past few weeks. We're dealing with them. We're dealing with hundreds upon hundreds of sites like this at the moment. Mm -hmm. And you said you were doing things to uh, get sites taken down. How do you guys go about doing that? Because obviously you don't have the personal ability to take somebody's site down. But no, how no. do you get other people to take the sites down what we would do is get as much information as we can from the scammer. For example, if they send me an email and that email has a site that they've created just to send out emails, now they've paid for that site. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the email headers, you can go in and see the reply to address will be, say, for example, their first one is at Yahoo, but the reply to will be at their site. So then you would write to that site and say, oh, I've had this email, I was told to contact you on this address. They'll reply back, and now you have their email address plus their email headers mm -hmm. with all the proof that that site is being used by a scammer, and then you send all that information to the people who are hosting the site, who are hosting the site name, and you say, look, this is a scammer, here's all the proof that we have, because you have to give them absolute proof that it's a scam. You can't just say, this site's a scam because I said so. You have to give them all the information they need. And you do that and you report them. We also work with a site called AA419 who have a very, very good reputation with the site owners. And we share information between the two sites. So we would have information on ours. They'd have information on theirs. And we could say, here's the information you need. This is the proof it's a scammer. And with that, the hosts will hopefully, it doesn't always happen, but the, the site don't, um, the people who are providing the site will then shut that site down. Yeah, no, I don't think any host wants the reputation of being, we're the go-to company for scammers. Uh, there are some, unfortunately. Yeah. I won't name them, <laughs> because I don't want to get sued. But, but, but mo yes, most legitimate are, companies don't want, legitimate don't want that reputation. It's not, no. it's not in their interest to be associated with no, criminal activity. Exactly. Which is good, because it's, you know, obviously you have 
I, it wouldn't surprise me if there's hosting organizations actually operated by oh, are. organizations. Yes, there, there definitely are. And that's unfortunate because those ones are pretty much impossible to get taken down, I assume. Pretty much. It's not entirely impossible. It's just very, very difficult. But it can be done if you're very, very lucky. And, and you get the right people involved. Yes. <laughs> that's, it, it's all very well as, you know, having this information. You have to give that information to the right people. And sometimes if the wind blows in the right direction, they will shut it down. Yeah. So are there some particularly disturbing stories that your uh, people to your website have uh, posted? We've had, uh, we were dealing with sextortion uh, pretty much when it just started. The site was about a month old and we started dealing with people coming in. Most people know about sextortion now where they will pretend to have a webcam and it's all software doing this. And they'll have footage of a female getting undressed. They'll convince the other person to do this as well. And then they send that footage back to them saying, I have this. If you don't send me this amount of money, then we will send it to all your friends and your family. Mm -hmm. And before this was more well known, we were dealing with a lot of cases where people were coming into us and basically saying, if this happens, I may as well just kill myself. Yeah. That their life is, and there have been instances where people have done it. Mm -hmm. And we've had to spend time with people dealing with that. Uh, there was one instance where it was a female, which is an unusual thing for these kind of scams. But when she was younger, about 14 years old, her boyfriend was living in another state and they were going on webcam together and they were sexting each other. And unknown to her, he had recorded it. Mm -hmm. And um, eight years later, somebody gets hold of this footage, sends her an email saying, I've got this footage of you. If you don't send me, I think it was about $3,000, I will send this to everybody. And he created a blog site. He put the videos up. He actually sent the link to her younger brother. Her brother was only a, a teenager. And he sent this of her as a 14-year-old to all her family. No. Oh. And she had uh, lawyers, uh, sorry, not lawyers, uh, private investigators trying to stop this thing. She came in asking for help. And it was incredibly embarrassing because, A, I'm having to look at this footage of her as a minor mm -hmm. in a state of undress. So I made sure I kept all the contact details, all the, all the chats that we had explaining that I'm doing this because of this. And I managed to go in and get the site shut down. But while I was doing that, there was another blog site that kind of, it said, would you be interested in this blog as well? And it must have been about three o'clock in the morning, and it had a picture of maybe a two-year-old girl oh. in a stage of undress. And I woke my wife up, said, look, come downstairs. I want you to witness what I'm doing, because I've got to report this account now to get this one shut down as well. If anybody picks up that I've been talk, you know, been looking at this site, this is why it's show me here. Um, would you like to try these other sites? I want you to see everything just just in case. And I had to go in and report that one as well. It was having a deal with uh, underage uh, nudity. And it was very, very difficult thing to have to deal with. And it's uh, another instance as well was when I was dealing with the pin scammers. Uh, back in my very early days, one of them came on and said, um, because I, I obviously wasn't paying them any money because you, you don't give scammers money. Yeah. And she said, would you like me to give you a show uh, if you send me money? And I'm well, well, no, not really. What about if I bring my sister in as well? And she called her sister over. The sister was eight or 10 years old. Oh. I know. Um, I, I said to her, look, sit down. Don't do this. Not for me, not for anybody. Don't do this. You're worth so much more than this. Please, please don't do it. And the thoughts have stuck with me all these years. This was like probably about 12, 13 years ago now. And it's the kind of thing that you will never, ever forget having to deal with. Just absolutely horrible. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've dealt with a, a number of people over the years who have lost their life savings to scammers mm -hmm. that They've 
gone out and gotten a second mortgage on their home and given all the money to the scammers. Yeah. And here they are, you know, in or approaching their retirement age and they have absolutely nothing. They're going to lose their home. They're going to lose everything that they have because yeah. some sleaze bag, you know, yeah. couldn't put their intelligence to some other use other than no. st stealing money from people. Yeah. We had a lady in, um, I'm in the UK, down in the, the southwest of England, who she sent about £15,000 to this scammer, sold her car, sold everything. She was made homeless. Uh, it was only through her having such good family that she actually had somewhere to live. She, she just lost everything. And it's not just the monetary uh, losses either. You lose trust in people. You lose trust in yourself. Um, I dealt with her for a few years, and I thankfully got to see her grow again. But when I first saw her, she was she was like this lost little child. It's a terrible thing to see a person be like. And she was such a sweet, intelligent person as well. And it was like she'd just given up. That's, that's hard, hard to deal with, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to realize that there are such evil people out there that mm. have no conscience about you know, doing these sort of things to people. Yeah. And that's unfortunately what we deal with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And so do you have like, you know, what are kind of your future plans for your site? Where you, you know, what, where would you like to see it grow? What would you like to see it do? I would like us to go out of business if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, a great answer. That's what, yeah. That's what we're aiming for. It's put ourselves out of business. And I say business, we're actually a group of volunteers uh, could we all do this for free. We don't charge anybody to come to the site. We have enough money, thankfully, to pay the site fees. But that's it. We, I'm not off to buy a new car anytime soon, shall we say. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's. Um, we wish that we could have um, such success that all the scammers stop. But we know it's not going to happen. So, in reality, we're just going to be carrying on doing what we're doing. Hopefully getting more and more people involved, getting more and more people coming to us and also posting up their scammer details because mm -hmm. everybody gets 419 scams. Uh, what we'd like is just to expand on that, become a much larger organization with more people doing the exact same thing as you're already doing. Mm -hmm. So that there's no, we, we'd like to become the number one site or anything like that. It's just, we want more people to come to us. We want more information to be put out there. Yep. So is there a way, so if someone, let's say they receive an email and they think it's from a scammer that they can use your site to try to find that out? Yeah, we have a forum there that you can join, post up, and we will check it for you. We also have information on the site as well. If you go to the front page, you'll see ways to spot for nine scammers, ways to spot romance scammers. But to get that information actually into the public, it needs to be posted on the forum. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't want to join the forum, it's, there's a link there with a form you can fill in, and you can post the information there, and then we will post it on your behalf. Gotcha. So we're trying to cover as many options as we can. Yeah, and that will allow people, if they're kind of uh, Googling an email address, that it might show up in your forum? Yeah, that, that's the plan. We have everything except one part of the forum, which is, if you're not sure it's a scammer, you can post it up there mm -hmm. and we can kind of check, oh, no, that's not a scammer. Or, yes, it is a scammer. We'll now move it to the main part. And that part is hidden from the search engines. So people don't get accused of being a scammer. Um, and it's showing up on, on searches. Yeah. So once we identify the scammer, it's up in the main section. So what are some of the things that you guys do to when it when you have someone who's posted something, like, well, I... Like, it just seems a little fishy to me. Maybe it's a scammer. Maybe it's not. I don't want to. I don't want to out someone who's not a scammer. What are some of the things that you guys do to try to make that determination? We would ask them for as much information as possible because the more we have, the better we can do. Uh, th their email address, just just a name, is no good because scammer names are all fake, and it could be a genuine person with that name. Mm -hmm. So you can't go. For example, just this week, I had somebody whose name was Charlie Brown. <laughs> you know, um, so you ask for the email address and we check the email address if it shows up anywhere. We ask for the email headers if they know how to do it because we can look at the email IP address from the headers and then go to your site and check out and say, okay, this person claims to be in this country. The email tells us they're in this country. Yeah. 
So we get that proof. If they have photographs, we'll ask for them. We can do an image search on that to see, okay, they've stolen the images from this person. Uh, the emails that they send, we can read them. We can check for signs that it's a scammer on that. Or we can do searches in the text itself to see if it appears anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Because that's why we ask people to post up the emails. Because the scams are used in these formats, uh, we call them formats, they scripts, but they're known as formats. Formats, scammers, scripts, templates, all the, all the same yes, thing. Yes, all the same. Yeah. We check that format out to see if it's been used before, and all the information we get gets all checked, and then we can come back and say, okay, this person is definitely a scammer because this, this, and this, or no, they're not a scammer. We checked out, and you could see that this site is legitimate. Um, it may have been badly worded, but it's not a scam email. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with the information we get, we have um, all the checks we can do. And it's all checked that other people can do as well. They could do these themselves because we don't do like hacking. We don't do anything like this. It's all typically using things like Google. And if you know how to Google the right things, then it's usually pretty easy to spot if it's a scammer or not. Yeah. So aside from things that are obvious, like an email address that's been used in another scam or exactly matching some other script? Are there other telltale signs that you guys see on a regular basis of a scam? There are the way that the scammers speak because the scammers will typically come from certain parts of the world and different kinds of scams will come from particular places. For example, the, the ones that are going on right now with the coronavirus, they're all in Cameroon. The sex auction is in Morocco, Ivory Coast in the Philippines. And you know these people speak in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is on the dating site, for example, claims to be a blonde-haired, blue-eyed female from Texas, and they say, I'm Jennifer by name, that is a big red flag because that is not how Jennifer a Texan from would speak. Texas would speak. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That by name, by profession, only child of my parents. Mm -hmm. These are signs that the person who's writing it is actually from West Africa. So it's things like this we look out for as well. Uh, if they put up two pictures and the two pictures are of two different people because they assume that they look the same, they must be the same person, we look for that. Other signs are somebody who's American, they're, the scammers just think Native American because they assume that Native American means American. So they would say, you know, I'm Native American. So it, there are these little words, little phrases that they use that even if the script had never been used before, you can tell by looking at these things that it's a scammer. Yeah, it's it's things that uh, a person from that part of the world would never say. Yes. And the other thing as well is the obvious money request. As yeah. soon as anybody asks for money, you know, ding, ding, ding. You, you know it's a scam. Yeah, I've, I've, I've dealt with a number of people that surprisingly, um, they were dealing with the scammers for like six months before the money request came in, which really surprised yeah. me because most of my interactions with the scammers, it's two or three emails in. It's, I love you. You're the most amazing person in the world. Oh, and I need yeah. money for X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Some of the romance scammers will profile a person. They'll send them a list of questions to find out what their likes, what their dislikes are, what little chink in their armor they can go for. And because they're talking to maybe dozens of people at the same time, they can string them along until they feel that they're right. Mm -hmm. And then they'll ask for the money. Others are, well, pretty stupid. I had one, I spoke to them for an hour, and then he sent me an email asking for $500, I think it was, for sanitary pads for the month. <laughs> so, just, you know, you speak to them for an hour, then you get this thing, yeah, I need these. And it's it's ridiculous. And the problem is, most of the time you see these things in the media, it's those ones that the people are talking about. Yeah. Because they are the obvious ones. They are the ones who are most likely to be scam baited or most likely to ring the alarm bells for somebody and they've then said, oh, look, you know, this person's a scammer, maybe contacted the media. But it's those ones who take their time and work at really hammering at that person, maybe stopping them from talking to their friends, depriving them of sleep, or leaving them so confused they don't know what's up, what's down anymore, mm -hmm. and then doing the money request. 
And those are the ones that don't get talked about anywhere near enough. Yeah. Have you ever been able to get a scammer to front money to you? No. And we never would either. Let's, um, it used to be a thing called uh, cash baiting yeah. where people were doing this, but it's really frowned upon these days because we know where that money is actually coming from. The scammer isn't sending the money. He's persuading somebody else to send the money to you. Yeah. So you're not getting a scammer's money. You're getting some poor victim's money. So no, we don't, I mean, and we wouldn't. It's, it's almost uh, very similar to someone being a money mule. Yes, exa- exactly the same kind of thing where instead of them sending it to maybe another victim to convince them that the scam is real, they're sending it to you instead. Yeah. So, yeah, things like that are, are generally uh, looked down upon these days, and we, we just don't do it. That's pretty wise. I had, I've had, i never tried to do it, and I've always read stories yeah. about people doing it, but I had never really put two and two together that it really probably is not the scammer's money, but... Uh, no, some, some other victims' money being sent. Yeah, that's the thing. You see it, and it's um, in the media. They like these stories where somebody has hacked a computer scammer or had the scammer to send them money. The media loves it. People like myself, we absolutely hate it because it's not what we do, and it's not what we want other people to do. You know, just just because they are scammers doesn't mean that we should break the law. Yeah, yeah, and it probably it's probably illegal to be doing that anyway. Yeah. So I know that you have uh, just uh, written a book uh, called uh, The Stupid Scammer Files Book. (laughs) Yes. Can you tell me about that book? (laughs) It's uh, basically when we get a scam, uh, I like to read through it and find those stupid little things that they say. Uh, If you go to stupidscammers.com, that's the other site that I run, and it is just a list of these things. And I've, I've written other books as well for other sites with the same premise. But this is the first one I've done completely for Scam Survivors. And it is, you have a subject and we discuss uh, the kind of things that they said about that subject. I, I like things like when they say, hello, sweaty, instead of hello, sweetie. <laughs> it, it's, it's this kind of thing, you know. Uh, if I look away one second, I go to uh, stupidscammers.com and I can give you some examples then for, uh, straight away. There we are. The, the last one I had from Mr. Sherman Oaks. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, not too sure. far from me <laughs> no <laughs> now, even I know that's not a person's name that's a place name uh, looking down a few more uh, we are the proud winner of the British Jack Port uh, lottery uh, it's these kind of things uh, economical and financial crime commission rather than uh, economic and crime it, it's these kind of things we look for and when we spot them I put them up on a site I make a note of them and the stupid scammer files is a collation of about eight years worth of that, plus some um, chapters as well in there that actually educate people because you know it can't all be fun. Yeah, we have to give you a little bit of education at the same time. So I explain various common scams and how they work, and the science to look out for in that as well. But uh, yeah, it's a brilliant read. I even now when I read it and I see things, I still laugh at it. And I've been looking at this thing for eight years. I, and this thing still catch me. I was just reading one. I'm George Berry from Bolton, Northern England. Hence, I'm a widower. Did all the women there die? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's when you read through these sort of things, you start seeing the consistent grammatical. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what it is. It's like I wouldn't put up a, a simple spelling mistake because a simple spelling mistake isn't funny. If it's a spelling mistake, that gives it a different meaning and that's a funny meaning then i'll put it up rather than postscript i've had one i put a post scrotum yeah <laughs> so it's just it's that kind of thing you're constantly looking for these and while i'm posting the all these things up on scam survivors i'm looking for these little nuggets as well that i can post up on stupid scammers plus if you go to stupid scammers we'll also put up links to some of the calls we've done Mm-hmm. And some of the calls we've done now, you could you couldn't put it in a book, but if you listen to them, they are absolutely ridiculous. I'd love to I'd love to have um, a book and a CD full of the calls as well. It's like a double pack. <laughs> that would be the perfect thing for me. You have to do the audio book version. Yes, but um, 
Not many people would bite with my accent, unfortunately. Oh, and, and I can't I can't afford somebody to pay to to read them out. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Uh, Wayne, I super appreciate you uh, coming on the Easy Prey podcast, and we'll definitely uh, add a link to uh, the uh, Stupid Scammer Files book uh, to uh, Amazon yeah, and a link to your website. Really appreciate the work that you're doing to try to educate people and raise awareness of the scams and that you're uh, trying to take a bite back. Yeah, no problem. Glad, glad to get the opportunity. And please remember, if you get these emails, come to us, post them up. Help warn other people. It, you may know it's a scam. Other people may not. And it may save somebody from losing their life savings. Yeah, that's, that's a great point to always post the script, post the template, post the email <laughs> address. Uh, that way, when someone else searches for it, they can easily see that it's a scam and they don't have to yeah. do a whole lot of hunting and digging on their own to figure it out. Yeah, absolutely. Again, thank you very much. I really thank appreciate you. your time. Take care now then. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Easy Prey Podcast. If you found this episode helpful, tell a friend and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Notes and a transcript of this episode with Wayne May can be found at easyprey.com slash 19.